How did uh, you know big practice today? How did, how do you think things looked out there for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like the mindset of our team. We, we, there's always work to we, things we got to improve on. Um, come out of today, we were working a lot of different things, some situational stuff, trying to get us ready to go Friday night. But at the same time, we, there's training camp things we're installing that uh, we're trying to implement as well. So you're doing two things, and I, for the most part, coming off the field, I, I was I was pleased with the focus today. Uh, wasn't out there today. Yeah, again, if something's serious, I'll let you know. Well, I guess that more than that, it seems like defensive linemen have really been going down in some ways this camp between Vincent Taylor and then Rodgers and now, you know, Marlon, even if it's serious or not. Like, is there a level of concern at this point? No. No. Now, how many do you play with on game day, Mike? What's that? Yeah. So we got plenty of guys out there. Uh, if some serious injury, it's just like we brought Abdul in here Daddy, coming to compete. Daddy, hey, Liam. Yes, but you know, in all seriousness, would you say if we thought it was something serious, we'd add some depth. But we're pretty good, and then we'll uh, take those things day by day. But if something serious, I promise you, I'll come up here and let you know. Coach, you had a couple of new guys, uh, Pruitt and uh, uh, Anderson, the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your plans for getting those guys acclimated? Yeah, I hope. Um, Hopefully they'll be ready to go and compete and uh, show us what they can do Friday night. Uh, do it, you know. He, hope he looks flashed the last two days. Let's see what he can do day after day and see what he can do Friday night. And then Michael, obviously, I've coached Michael, uh, tight end coach and an offensive coordinator, and coming off an injury and uh, give him a chance to come here and compete. And it looked like Franks did a little bit um, quarterbacking. Now you said he was going to get some. Is that yeah, it depends how the game goes. Um, but yeah, he's got to be ready to go. Have you have you decided like, is it going to be 50-50 in terms of snaps between? I'm not going to strategy, um, but if you want to hedge your bet, it, it won't be 50-50. So, <laughs> but I'm not going to go into like the exact snap number. Some of us going to see um, as we get in there and towards Thursday, I'll have a clear picture. But it won't be 50-50. I noticed there were several snaps where you were you were kind of like standing in deep safety. Whatever. Are you just wanting to make sure everybody's? Well, sometimes you know they hear me enough back there, and you're trying to get them where you tell everybody like leave them alone, and let them play. See if guys can correct it. If, you know, if you got an issue, guy. I want to hear guys talk in the back end, and sometimes I need to get away. I'm calling the play in, and I'm watching it. I want to see if who can fix things out there, or who you know play after play. So there's a lot of things I'm looking for. Sometimes they don't need to hear me behind them all the time either because they're not going to hear me on game day. So are you watching the defense on that more than the offense? You get a clearer picture. I mean, I can't sit here and act like I can see all 22, but you do see a lot more back there. Yeah, these guys made a transition to that left guard spot. Um, some things he's worked through. That, But I, I think for the most part, I've been pretty pleased. It's different. I think he's getting more comfortable with that spot every day. And so until... If somebody else emerges or he does something that doesn't deserve to be up there, he'll be in there right now. How about the battle in the center? Yeah, it's still competitive. So uh, nothing's changed there. So we'll see how it plays out. Well, those guys are doing a nice job. And, and, and Newsel's trying to push them too, but uh, Drew and, and Henny are good competition. Dan Campbell said that he spoke with you guys and you guys both said you were going to play starters. Is that rare that you would talk to another head coach to plan? <laughs> Is that rare that you would talk to another head coach to plan you know, before a preseason game? Or? Uh, no, I mean, look, we didn't get into specifics. So, like, put anything that, that we're not we're doing. Uh, I got a lot of respect for Dan and Brad Holmes. I, I, I like what they're you – know, Terry and I have become, you know, friends with those guys. Uh, Terry has a relationship with Dan from working their games in New Orleans. Uh, guys that came in the same year as Terry and I, trying to build something. So I got a lot of respect for him. We've casually talked, but that's, there's no limits. Like, that's not what we're doing. It's just sometimes you want to make sure, and I don't blame them, but, and you watch. But I've been around teams, all of a sudden, you know, you're leaving in Grady Jarrett versus the rookie free agent guard, and we're not, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to get good evaluations, and we got to do what's best for our teams. got to do what's best for him. But there's, I think people have conversations a lot. But there's nothing set in stone. Playing three preseason games as opposed to four, does it change your approach at all? I think it's year to year. Certainly our approach will be different this year. You know, what you do with that fourth one, most people weren't playing anybody in the fourth one, so you kind of almost 
places I've been, some years you split the squads and they start getting ready for week one, and then you got the young guys trying to make it. Um, now you don't have that game. So, you know, we, we had a plan last year. I'll, I'll tweak a few things. But, yeah, I mean, so to answer your question, yes, it does change things.